Hi guys, so I thought I'd do a vlog today because we are going to the Chooksby Medieval Festival. <laughs> it's meant to be really nice today, so um, we're all getting dressed up and everything, but it should be a really good day, so I thought I'd take you guys with me. Rocking his uh, summer top there. It's absolutely packed and it's really warm. I brought a few things, but I'll show you bread that. nowadays. But the Harris Hawk is very clever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you find it funny. <laughs> Come on, Eric. Hey, He's done. He's having fun, isn't it? Yeah. He's, He's just having fun. He's lost him. Come on, boys. He's, He's gone now. <laughs> Here, Eric. He's gone. Definitely when he comes, I'll bring him in. <laughs> He's just enjoying that. A bit of wind, a bit of breeze. Oh, almost. He almost came in the stoop then. Here, Here he comes. Look at that. Wow. To the Country Tower and uh, we'll raise your help for you. With that, I'm ready with the mics to lay this drop rock the kingdom for him. And on one side was his wife, courageous, clever, and determined that whatever happened, her son, in a very short time, on this field in front of us. The eldest is going to be one of the leaders of the armies fighting against. The Yorkist archers standing, digging themselves in, and then they're lofting the arrows over. They're sending them over at a fairly, a fairly slow arc there. They're just aiming for anything, basically. They're not sniping at the moment. They are just hailing down random death. An army arriving. It will be passing right in front of all of you over the next few minutes. The vanguard here is led by the Earl of Devon who is going to perform the left rank of the army. History has little to say about him. He was sober, competent, trustworthy, loyal, and rather dull. Of the Earl of Devon, processing in front of you. <coughs> With a magnificent sack. that left flank of the Lancastrian army. of the West Country of England fighting for Lancaster, now passing down the centre of our line and passing to the left. And those of you on the far right, Bonjou slaughter his opponents and win the crown for himself. And in the body of men behind them, the slippery Lord Wedlock, who's going to be with them in the centre of the army, anchoring that, the man who Changing sides is the obvious strategy of politics. And behind them in turn, who are who is that of Queen Margaret's bodyguard. Some of the bravest soldiers in Europe, they're Frenchmen who come to a strange country to protect a woman whom they honour and love. Somerset himself. Magnificent. 
in his moustache and the arms of the Beaufort family on his surcoat and behind him his blue and white clad followers drawn from the West Country. A towering figure of a man. Lord Hastings is going to be up against the Earl of Devon and that's exactly right because they're very similar. These are stocky, stolid, dependable noblemen who are good anchor figures for a wing. And those of you on the far right can see the royal standard of England being carried in, with the figure of King Edward himself pacing in front of it. Tall, muscular, <laughs> with a magnificent red and gold and blue circles with the royal arms of England upon it, striding forth in front of his men. He's going to lead from the front. He's going to take part of the battle. Richard, Duke of Gloucester, and we have, I believe, the Duke of Clarence as well. Yes, uh, Clarence isn't being given a command of his own at this battle because he's proved himself so utterly unreliable. He's a bit of dignity and to be the one to come forward to start the negotiating. The Yorkist artillery is being prepared in front of the Yorkist line. Cannon at this period were an extremely rudimentary, embryonic, new form of warfare. They were extremely dangerous, they often blew up, they were extremely inaccurate, and yet if you're firing into an enemy army you don't have to be accurate, because each one of those cannonballs can kill half a dozen of you. They're quite, they're quite a powerful laxity. And there is the from the battle himself and all the honour with it. It's an incredibly risky thing. I wonder whether he was expecting Wenlock to bring the centre block forward with him, whether there's been some dreadful miscommunication. It could well be, yes. Uh, when the battle was over, it was rather hard to get a, a straight story out of this. But certainly the disaster has occurred. Yes. The Lancastrian army is now in three pieces and only one third of it's engaged. But it's doing its best. Somerset's men are heroes. And unsupported, they're trying very hard to roll up the Yorkist army. And you can hear that kettle-mending noise of steel against steel about which the romantic poets wax so lyrically. In fact, what it's denoting is sheer hell. I don't know about romantic poetry, what it sounds most like is a box of cutlery falling down the stairs. So I can see the livery of the Duke of Somerset at the back there. I believe it's the Duke of Somerset. It is the Duke of yeah. Somerset. He seems astonishingly unwilling to go into the front line of his own other advance or to go to the advance themselves. The king is withdrawing his men in the centre, including the Irish, to close up again. There's a matter of pride involved here. Oh, there's an immense amount of pride in this. <clears throat> and an immense amount of respect for what we're representing as well. It isn't just a case of going out and bashing and ha ha ha. The history means a lot to all of the men out here. The archers are still fighting on the far side of the field, loosing on volleys against each other. Attempt, attempt for what? Parley, agreement, combat. Come out unhelmeted. Very, very unusual. Yes. And they're both very well matched. The king is much older and much bigger. The prince only a teenager and smaller. 
but they're using their weapons perfectly. Yorkies can't be announcing their presence there. And the two royal men are joining battle again. But now they're separating as the Yorkist cavalry comes in to try and cut off the prince. Charging through the Lancastrian.